Hi, I'm Chad Wunderlich. And of all the displays of the Viking Pump Museum, this one is my favorite. It showcases three of the different pump technologies produced here at Viking Pump. The internal gear, the external gear, and the vane. Today, let's discuss the similarities and differences between these three technologies. This is the pump report. As we look at these three different technologies, you can see there are differences, but there are a lot of similarities. Let's look at those first. All are rotary positive displacement pumps. This means that they're self-priming, provide smooth, non-pulsing flow, are gentle and low shear. And in each case, the liquid is taking the long path through the pump casing. This helps to determine which side is the inlet, which is the outlet, and what the correct rotation is. Now that we've covered the similarities, let's look at what makes each different. We're gonna start with the internal gear pump. The internal gear pump was invented by Viking Pump over 100 years ago and is a very simple technology. It utilizes only two moving parts, a drive gear called a rotor and a driven gear called an idler. For internal gear pumps, as the rotor and idler rotate, the gears come out of mesh in the suction side. This creates a vacuum and pulls the liquid in between the gear teeth. A crescent on the head of the pump separates the two sides and creates cavities between where the liquid is carried through. As the gears come into mesh on the discharge side, the liquid is forced out of the casing and into the piping. These pumps are best suited to viscous liquids. They excel at pumping things like resins, asphalts, and chocolates. Similar to the internal gear pump, Viking also produces external gear pumps. These also use two gears, but in this case, the drive gear and the driven gear are both identical. For the external gear pump, much like the internal gear pump, the gears come out of mesh on the suction side, creating a vacuum and pulling the liquid in. In this case, the liquid is carried between the gear teeth and the casing wall until it reaches the discharge side of the pump, where the gears come into mesh and force the liquid out. These pumps excel at high pressure applications. Examples include pipeline injection, high pressure fuel delivery, or high pressure polyurethane foam. Lastly, let's talk about the vein pump. It is a little different than these other two. In this pump, we use a series of veins that slide in and out of a rotor in a cam-shaped housing. Vein pumps work a little different than the gear pumps. In this case, a round rotor with slots contains a number of veins. These veins slide in and out of the slots in a cam-shaped profile housing. On the suction side, a cavity is created, and on the discharge side, as the vein is forced back into its slot, the cavity is removed, forcing the liquid from the pump casing. Vein pumps are best applied on thin, non-lubricating applications, like solvents, alcohol, acetone, or jet fuel. Now that you understand the advantages and disadvantages of this, let's look at one key feature of each of these pumps to help you better apply each into your own applications. Internal gear pumps, for example, excel at handling viscous liquids. External gear pumps are excellent at high pressure applications. And sliding vein pumps are best when applied to thin, non-lubricating liquids. Now, while there are a lot of other advantages to these technologies and a lot of reasons why you might pick one technology over another, that will give you at least a direction as to where to apply each of these technologies. To learn more about these pump principles or to view other pump reports, visit our website at vikingpump.com.